Hello and welcome to Election Countdown in a week when the general election campaign finally took off. My name is Tony McMahon and I'm joined as ever by Neil Prothero. Neil, the first big row of this general election campaign was over national insurance contributions, Labour defending its proposals, the Tories on the attack and the Lib Dems very critical. What did you make of this row? I think I can probably take three things from it so far. I think the first point is that it's hit Labour quite hard. They didn't see this coming and the fact that so many business leaders have come out and seemingly excited with, with the Tory sort of proposals and idea. I think Labour being a bit surprised by this and not quite sure how to respond, um, if only because the Tory sort of idea is to use efficiency savings to make up the difference and a large part of the sort of Labour's deficit reduction plan rests on efficiency savings as well. So criticising that approach is quite difficult for them and they're not quite sure which way to go at the moment. Um, second point is it's probably shifted the debate over deficit reduction a little more clearly. Not a lot, but just a little more in terms of actually setting up a few dividing lines between the two parties that are a little bit more clearer um, in terms of sort of the, the general approach the two parties take medium term. And the Tories clearly see tax cutting and reducing the size of the state as the way to go. Labour believe that a larger state which may be involving tax rises is a separate. So there is a bit more of a divide in that area. I mean, obviously, that includes the fact that whatever happens, you're going to have to have tax rises and spending cuts after the election. Um, but that sort of seems to be uh, what's happening so far. So on this public spending debate, we have Ed Balls for Labour now ring-fencing education. We've already had the Tories ring-fencing health. Do you think there's a danger of far too much ring-fencing going on? <laughs> well, I think, I mean, this obviously, the NHS is a key area. Education is a key area that both parties clearly don't want to be seen to be cutting now, whether that's a realistic idea in terms of how much cutting of public spending there will have to be. I'm not too convinced that that's the case. I, I, I don't see the amount of spending that has taken place over the past decade in, for example, education and healthcare has been enormous. It's obviously led to quite a lot of benefits, but to actually take the stance that that should be ring-fenced and you can't make any savings from that whatsoever seems to me not a particularly realistic way to go. But you have to take into account the public perceptions and obviously on the NHS and education it's very important. Um, I, my sort of th feeling is that when push comes to shove in a year's time, two years' time, is that you won't be able to avoid some sort of cuts. Um, obviously they'll try to protect frontline spending but I think it's inevitable that at some point there will be reductions. We've got now the main parties, it seems, moving to common ground on spending cuts. The Tories are toning down their early draconian language. We've got Labour saying, yes, some cuts are inevitable. I mean, is there any difference, you think, between the three main parties on the public spending cut issue? It's, I mean, it's difficult to say. I mean, the whole sort of issue over national insurance, for example, it seems to be dominating debate, but it, you still must remember that it, it only accounts for, I, mean, I think the difference is about 5.6 billion that the Tories are planning that won't be increased in tax. And when you've got an annual deficit of 170, 180 billion, it's still relatively small fry. So the, you can debate over what, what sort of taxes and sort of impact what uh, in the short term will be. But you really have still have to take into account the larger view that this is an enormous deficit. It has to be brought down. Probably quite soon after the election, the, the bond markets, financial investors will demand some attention on this. Um, so that does imply tax rises, if not national insurance and other tax rises, whether that's VAT, income tax, new green taxes, and deep spending cuts in, in a lot of areas. Um, so the parties are unlikely to approach this issue before the election because the public, they realise, don't want to hear it. Um, but it is inevitable, and um, I think there will be quite a few surprises post-election in terms of what the actual policies mean for the man on the street in terms of taxes and spending. And finally, are you a cider drinker and what's your view of the uh, debate, if we can call it that, about that tax hike? Um, I'm not especially a cider drinker, but it, it's sort of strange, this sort of wash up in the past few days as, as they've sort of tried to, uh, to push through what, what policies they can. Obviously the cider tax has been, has been sort of quietly removed from, the, from the, the pledge and sort of raised it by um, well, whatever it was, 10% tax or something. Um, I mean, obviously, that, that is good news for, for cider drinkers. Um, again, it was just it was, it was sort of a strange, strange sort of policy to take in terms of it was a very small fry. It doesn't really make anything in the big scheme of things in terms of the deficits. Um, and uh, I think there are, there are obviously much bigger um, issues, more difficult decisions to make 
in, in the coming weeks and months. Thank you, Neil. Well, in future weeks, we're going to be getting commentary from the Economist Intelligence Unit on the leadership debates that are coming up. Hope you'll join us for that. Until then, thank you and goodbye.